Hi everyone and welcome. So today I wanted to show you the uh, this project, which is which contains a character controller with animated uh, hands and gun. And first, I want to show you uh, what what I made. So uh, what this controller includes, and then I wanted to show you how I structured it. So uh, you know, like from a more technical uh, standpoint. Um, so what scripts it, it contains and what animations it contains what what what's the animation state machine and stuff like that i'm not going to dive deep into the scripts actually i'm not i'm not going to cover them but i'm going to show you what scripts i have attached if you want me to dive much deeper into scripts and all these kind of things um just write me in the comments below and you know i i uh, i can make a, a separate video in which i dive into the scripts now what does this controller contain well you can walk around uh, and you have you can stay still you have an idle animation you can walk around and you have a walking animation you can crouch um, and you can walk while crouched you, uh, um, you can run by holding down shift uh, you can shoot uh, you can aim and you can shoot while aiming um, if you're running and you aim, then you're going to start walking. Look at the speed of the character. It just drops, you know. Uh, and if you run and you start shooting, then you're going to walk again. And this is the worst part of it. As you can see, there is very bad blending between running and walking uh, and running and shooting, basically. So that's something I still have to fix. But this is roughly what the um, what the controller now contains. Okay. So this is the, the general overview of the controller. Now I can show you in a bit more detail uh, what uh, what components I, I attached and what you know what stuff is um, uh, is uh, what, what animations and all these kind of things. Also, there is yeah you can notice that there is some some some, some bad stuff regarding shadows uh i'm using a dual camera setup so if i go close to the walls i'm not i'm not getting any clipping uh which is which is good uh the only thing is that um um by using this dual camera setup i have the uh static objects uh uh set to uh well i have basically i have duplicates of them to cast shadows in uh, um on a different layer uh due to this camera setup which i'll show you later on um but yeah i i'm getting some yeah some 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 behavior some bad behavior in some moments that i'm not i don't really like for example in this case you can see that the shadow on the hand when i turn the gun all of a sudden appears and now it's not there anymore so it's, it's really bad i don't like it um i'm not sure why it's happening but i i have to figure that out um yeah yeah okay so let's let's see how how this is made. So now we're here in Unity, and we can just look around um, and see how the the character controller is actually made. Uh, I want to apologize for the fact that I have most of the names in the of of, the, of each script in Italian, um, but uh, I'm going to translate everything. And again, since we're not diving in inside the scripts as of now, I um i it's not really a, it's not really problematic for this video you know um also in the hierarchy i'm using some italian uh, names but I'll, I'll explain what each of those mean step by step so <clears throat> first of all this is the player the player is this guy um and basically it contains everything that the player has okay which kind of makes sense um so the the main um the main game object which is the player contains all of these things so it has uh, a, a character controller i'm not using phys phy um, uh, rigid bodies i'm using a character controller and the reason why i'm using it is because um uh the uh, the slope limit and the step offset kind of give you a relatively flexible uh, or easy way to deal with slopes and steps uh, but apart from that to be honest um, um, 
yeah, there are ma many more reasons. I mean, I'm I'm using it also due to the due to the fact that you can immediately vary height without affecting the scale, uh, which is good if you have children, but um, and even the radius. Um, but the the other nice thing is that you have the skin width, and the skin width allows you to essentially it allows this collider, uh, which is the character controller collider, to slightly penetrate onto other uh, colliders such as you know this cube or that that wall um, without actually jittering so you don't have to you, yeah basically you, you don't have to deal with fixed update stuff um, uh, you know if, if, or or rigid body dot velocity or transform dot position issues here you can just move this move the character controller by feeding a movement um, uh, vector and essentially if you if you're gonna start bumping into walls uh, the yeah the the, the collider it's itself will deal uh, using the skin with it will deal with uh, letting you slide along that wall and not jittering. Now the skin width usually they, they on the Unity documentation tells you that it should be I think uh 10% of the uh, well, I don't remember anymore to be honest but it's it has to be higher than what I set here definitely uh, because this uh, might result in a bit of jittering but now as of now I'm using this because of the crouching in the um in my crouching script um if I don't use this small skin width, I'll, I'll get jittering. So it's the it's the actual opposite. But never mind, never mind that. Don't, don't follow what I'm doing in this case. I should change it in the future. Um, anyway, uh, after the character controller, we have a movement script, and this only deals with actually moving the player uh, straight, uh, you know, like backwards on the side, uh, feeding those those um, um, those parameters to the character controller uh, and you can also th this is actually these last two parameters are the speed of the jump and uh, the jump so setting jump active or not as of now i'm not using jumping i don't like jumping in, in fps games i'm not a big uh you know like um fan of uh um oh how do you call them um fast-paced fps so I, i'm not, i don't really like jumps uh i don't think they're necessary and i in most of my you know like in, in, when i code jumps i try to avoid putting them but i always leave the option to do it uh, this third script uh is actually dealing with the camera uh, so if you if you look as a child of the player i have one camera and this camera renders the world and then I have another camera, which is child of the of the world, or the, you know, the environment camera, which only renders the weapon basically and arms. Now, uh, and I'll I'll get into the 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 dual camera setup later on. But um, as of now, um, you can see that the main camera. Um, um, is actually uh, yeah, th this script, uh, this third script, uh, which is on the player, uh, takes care of the main camera. So basically what I do is, uh, and this is kind of standard, everybody does this, uh, when you move the player uh, forward, backwards, left and right, you actually move the this game object, which is the player game object. Uh, and when we move the camera, what uh, or when we want to rotate the camera up and down, uh, we just move the camera so that the you know the player game object doesn't rotate so this is pretty straightforward uh this is sensitivity uh parameters and this is the maximum angle that i use to clamp you know the camera uh, so that it you cannot turn it onto it uh, onto itself then what we have is we have a weapon script now the weapon script um basically takes in a scriptable object uh which is this guy which is a gun in this case, and it has a set of parameters like the name of the weapon, the damage, the mag magazine size, a, a bool which actually asks you if it is an automatic weapon or not, and the prefab of the weapon and arms uh, object. You know that the prefab of the prefab of the actual model, basically. 
So once I pass in all those things, and I also pass in the um, camera which renders the weapon, basically um, when I press play, you will see that below this the the, the weapon camera, uh, my weapon will get instantiated. Well, let's do this. Yeah, you can see that I have a pivot, and I have a hands gun, and this is essentially this essentially gets instantiated at at, uh, in the start method um, when we play the game, okay? Then, uh, the final script which I have uh, is a, basically, I called it, uh, translating literally, I called it a animation um, sync script, okay? So what this does is essentially it tries to pass onto the uh, animator. Um, yeah, it passes onto the animator uh, the uh, the actual states. So am I walking? Am I just standing still? Am I running? All these kind of things. And basically that decides what animation to play, you know? Uh, yeah, on, on the car, on, on the arms themselves. Um, so yeah, this is roughly the script structure that I have uh, on here. So if we look at the animator, the animator is pretty simple actually. Uh, we've we have a entry point uh, which leads directly onto this state, which means uh, extract, uh, translated literally. And what this does is you're basically I'm um, playing the. Um, animation of getting the weapon out as if you're getting it out of your uh, you know your your whatever your pants or your back i, I don't know um and you you know every time you equip this weapon you have to go through this uh, extraction state and then uh we have we we play you know we, we go through this transition which has an exit an exit time so we we have to play the extracting animation fully until it, until it ends and then we can move on to the idle animation now the idle animation of course it's um uh, it has a you know it, it's looped so it keeps on staying at this idle state unless uh we get these parameters changing so if we get the this bool, which is which means walking. If we get the walking bool to true, we start walking. Um, if we get the running bool to true, we start running. Uh, you can see it here. Um, yeah, so these kind of things. Uh, never mind this. This is a state which I made, and I actually have to delete it. So that's yeah, that's that. Um, and essentially. Um, the way I'm setting these bulls is I'm actually um, checking them every frame, and um, I'm, I for this system I use a public enum uh, for actually keeping track of the state of the character. So uh, is he actually moving? Is he actually running? That's all stored in an enum, basically. Okay. Uh, so if you don't know about enums, just um, check them out because they're really useful to. Uh, defining states, um, game state or player state, whatever kind of state, enums are pretty useful, and that's what I use. Uh, now you might have noticed that I have a separate layer. Uh, I have a second layer, and the second layer is actually the shooting layer. Now the shooting layer is even simpler. What does it have? So the shooting layer, uh, you have an entry point which goes onto a layer which is completely empty. So why is it completely empty? Because then um, so this layer, um, this layer, as you know, since it's on the bottom, it will overwrite the, um, the base layer. Okay, it will overwrite the base layer. Uh, so if I play an animation on this layer, it will overwrite what the base layer is doing. Uh, if they're both set to a weight of one. Okay. Now, having said this. Uh, the reason why I'm playing this empty state is because uh, when I'm walking, when I'm running, I don't want to overwrite the base layer. So even if I'm overwriting it, I'm overwriting it with no animations. So of course you don't see anything happening. You see it. You see the player still running and walking. You know. Uh, so that's fine. 
But as soon as I start shooting, independently of what the character is doing, what I do is I play the shooting animation. So there is a transition based on a trigger, which is this sparrow, which is uh, which means I'm shooting. Uh, so when I get this trigger on, uh, we get this animation. And since we are on lower layer, which has priority, um, I see the shooting animation being played regardless of if I'm idling, walking, uh, running, you know, whatever I'm doing, regardless of that, I see the shooting animation as soon as I start shooting. So that's the important uh, thing to, you know, to, to take from, from, from this. Um, yeah, so this is roughly how my animator looks. Now, the last thing, uh, that I want to touch upon is the aiming. Now, you can tackle aiming in many different ways. Um, this is a very simple way, it's the one I'm using. Um, and basically, it works in the following way. Um, let's zoom in the scene. Actually, you can see it much better here. So you can see the camera. Um, wait, let me actually yeah, select this. You can see the um, the weapon camera, and you can see my uh, arms, okay? So what I do is, uh, when I aim, so when I hold down the right mouse button, I'm not actually animating the guns uh, in any way, okay? What I'm doing is I'm just bringing the guns uh, and the arms and, the, and the, the gun itself closer to the player and to a very specific position. That's all I'm doing. So actually, as you can see, the animation while I'm shooting or while I'm aiming and shooting is exactly the same. Nothing is changing. OK, so this is one approach. And you can actually see that that's the reason why I, that's one of the reasons why I have a pivot. So um, I'm, I'm not using so I'm using a model, a 3D model, which I grabbed from um, uh, the asset store. So this is not mine. Um, um, but this model was structured in, in the following way. Basically, it has, a, um, it has a parent, and then it has all the uh, transforms of the rig, and then it has all the meshes of the gun and the arms. However, uh, as you can see, the origin of, um, of that gun you can see, as you can see right here on the scene view is actually very low it's uh, the, the origin is much lower so i basically usually what you need to do is you need to have a pivot point you, you need to uh, parent the gun itself to a pivot point that um so so that pivot point is always anchored to the camera basically and the gun you can move the gun where basically however you want with respect to that pivot point and this allows you, for example, for this aiming animation. Okay. Oh, sorry. Um, so what I'm doing again, I'm moving this game object, which is actually the gun, the gun, uh, like the parent of all the rig components, so all the transforms and all the meshes. I'm moving that with respect to a pivot, which I defined, which is an empty game object, basically, that is. Uh, exactly at the same point at the um, uh, weapon camera, OK? That's all I'm doing. OK, thanks, guys, for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.